Hey guys, it is Monday here in West Virginia, so it's time for us to do our Mopar Monday. And unlike our usual Mopar Mondays, we're not doing this at our Mr. Norm's Grand Spalding Dodge dealership diorama because we are unboxing a 124th car today. So it's a little bit out of our regular area and um, scale. So we're going to take a look at this bad boy. This is a car that I couldn't turned down when I seen it. This is a Danbury Mint 1958 Plymouth Fury Pro Street. This thing is awesome. Uh, it's about maybe 20 years old, 22 years old. I think it came out right around like 2000, 2002, something like that. So let's get him out. So basically you just have this white shipper box and it doesn't really have anything else except fragile handle care. It tells you what side to open it from and that's pretty much it. So we're opening it from that side here and we'll get rid of our shipper. Then we'll flip him up on the side like so just for a minute. I'm holding these because they will fall out. They package the hood and the deck lid separately because they are lift off pieces. They are not hinged pieces. And then it gives you some warning to do not remove this foam top before reading the unpacking instructions. Enclosed in the accompanying envelope. Otherwise you may accidentally break your replica please read the instructions first so anyways when i bought this i didn't get the instructions but it's pretty self-explanatory of how it comes out so as i mentioned they pack these separately this is your deck lid and i will go ahead and open it now and it kind of just snaps together Almost like a protecto pack, as you can see. Maybe a little bit tougher, and you want to be careful in doing so. So, this is your rear wing for this car, and it is actually made of tin, like an aluminum, like the real thing. And the deck lid itself is die cast, and it has little black clips that clip it on to the car this foam is a protecto for the fuel line and we'll get into that then you can see the little fasteners which would be like the zeus fasteners that the real race cars use to hold on their removable body panels so that is your deck lid so we'll put him over here to the side then you have your hood with the pro stock scoop so get him open and this is also all die cast. Nice chrome trim. Replicate the real thing. Even the scoop is die cast. It's not plastic. So it's really cool. And these little separate fasteners. They're made of like some kind of thinner type tin style metal. Replicate the Zeus fasteners. And you have your Mopar logo on the side of the scoop and flipping it over you have these clips that will help snap it onto the model when we get him out so that is our next move and i'll throw those pvc containers off to the side and we're putting our parts there on some tissue keep them safe so styrofoam just pops right off and the car sits in there there is an interlocking plastic thing on the bottom here so you do want to grab from the sides and kind of pull up instead of pulling from the roof the roof is metal it's not plastic it's not cheaply made like some of the 118 stuff that's another thing i'll go over in another episode we got a 118th out of world christine but it was damaged in shipping and one of the things damaged was the roof how it snaps on but this is all metal so this is a very high-end model and you would think that the 118th out of worlds at the hundred dollars that they are would be a higher end model too but it's not now this one though however is so here is your model 
As you can see, no deck lid, no hood. Does have hinged doors. And we are going to zoom in on every aspect of this to give you guys a really nice look at the car. So, we're going to open our passenger door. As you can see, the door handle, the door lock are all separate pieces. This has the gold and bows stainless side trim, whereas like Christine just had the silver insert. So, getting this door opened here. And as you can see... Fully detailed door panel with the window cranks, armrest, and such. Very nicely done. And we'll zoom back out. And then we'll spin him around. And as you can see, the side quarter glass is representing, like, Lexon, where it has the rivets holding it in, where they wouldn't roll down. The rear window has some holes cut in it, and I really don't understand that aspect unless it's for the smoke to exit during a burnout or something, how sometimes the cockpit area of the car fills with smoke. That may be what that's for, for or some kind of depressurizing. I have no clue why those are there. I've never seen that before in a pro stock car. Maybe some of you guys that are really into pro stock and pro mod and HRA stuff may know why. I'm not sure. Has fabric seat belts and full cage and has the foil on this sidebar and this side back there in the rear window as you can see. And then uh, we'll get this closed here. And then looking onto the dashboard, you can see it has the rear view mirror mounted on the dash instead of the window, how these cars were, which is pretty cool. You have your tachometer with the shift light there and the wiring going from the back of the tach down into the gauge cluster. Um, so really nicely done. And the gauge cluster is detailed. Fairly good. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see it so well. Zooming in, it gets a little bit blurry and grainy the closer we zoom in. But you get the idea. And you can see the shifter and stuff. And the floors are actually tin. They're not carpet or anything. This is a very nice replica of a... Sorry of a pro mod car now going to the back you can see that you have fabric covered parachutes and the straps here are also fabric and it has the regular coated wire like cable to pull and release the parachutes dual batteries and you have your fuel cell with the pump and such and then the vent tube i think that's what that foam was there for is to protect the inside of the deck lid and also to protect this from getting bent i would think uh while pushing down on the deck lid trying to get it to snap on as you can see fully detailed tail lights bumpers and such and now we're going to flip him around and show you the fully detailed and dressed hemi as you can see, you have your dual dominators on a tunnel ram, your linkage, and the wires for the Hemi going to the distributor and such. And the firewall is also tin. And dual master cylinder, you can see the detailed gold grill. The dual electric fans with the aluminum radiator, and that is actually a tin or an aluminum shroud core support your cage coming through it's a full tube chassis car we'll show you that next and it does have functional steering uh let me get, open this again and as you can see the steering wheel does move it has a fire extinguisher in the center there and you can kind of see the nitrous tank Back there, mounted between the wheel tubs. A little hard to see in there, but it's there. And then, <clears throat> flipping him over. Oh, let me adjust the camera here. So, flipping him over. You got a full square tube chassis and such. 
and the drive shaft does not move. I figured it would. What does move, though, are the wheels on the wheelie bars. They are actually separate pieces. The coilovers or actual springs and such. Very rigid rear suspension, which it would be like that on the real deal. Four-link suspension and a 9-inch Ford-style rear end. A fabricated rear end, whatever you'd like to call it. And it does have an automatic, probably like 727, 904, or something like that. And then it has some shorty mufflers. It isn't full open headers, so it could be a street car. As you can see, the tires are treaded, so pretty cool. The fabric for the parachutes are there, once again. And the willy bars are all metal. They are not plastic. And you can see that this does have a strut style front end and it does function. And I did not show you that. So there is your functioning front suspension. Very cool. Now <clears throat> we'll go ahead and snap the hood on. As you can see, once it's snapped on, it's on there good. And then the deck lid. That was a little bit trickier to get lined up in there and get him to snap on good. But when it does, it lines up very nicely with the fins and everything. As you can see, very sweet looking piece. So if you guys have the opportunity to get one, I highly recommend it. The one thing that you have to be careful with with these old Danbury mints and Franklin mints is the... Not really zinc rot. I haven't seen a lot of them zinc rot, but I have seen a lot with paint rash. That's what I always ask everyone. Is there any paint rash or anything like that with the car? And sometimes there are. Uh, with this one, they told me it was new in the box. It had never been removed. And I kind of do believe that because it has very minimal like rashing on it. There's a little bit here on the fender leg. And that is about it. And then on the lower quarter, there was a little, like, spotting. But I was able to rub that off with a rubbing compound. There was still just a tad bit there, as you can see. But it's not really any major paint rash. Um, so that was good. It was in a, I guess, climate-controlled area. Because I know humidity and moisture really promotes... The paint rashing and the way that you store them. So now this one in my hands will always be exposed in a climate controlled area. It will not be back in the box. Worst case scenario, it will be in an acrylic case, but it will always be in climate controlled area. So it will stay nice and fresh and hopefully it will always stay in this nice of a condition. Because this is one I would like to hang on to for a while. Very nice looking car. Not really what I usually collect in scale, but it is one that I had to get. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. As I said, just be careful when you do buy them. Ask questions about paint rash, how they were stored and displayed and such things like that to help prevent you from buying one with rash. Because these things can be costly sometimes. This one I got for a reasonable price, around 120 bucks, So it was pretty well priced. And then they do sell upwards of like 200 250 Um, So I got lucky and found one cheap. But I would pay 200 or would have paid 200 or 250 to get a nice uh, variant of it. So that is um, my two cents on these guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be back again tomorrow with some Hot Wheel Premium Stunbox for you. Thanks for watching.